we're building a complex of about 10 vernal pool wetlands in a, uh, a seven or eight year old timber harvest along the river to enhance the habitat here in this private forest. Welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. My name is Adam Downing with Virginia Cooperative Extension. I'm here today with my friend and a natural resource colleague, Mike Hazlett, with Virginia Vernal Pools. And that's the subject of today, vernal pools and forested wetlands. And we're in a site in the mountains of Western Virginia in Bath County. And so, Mike, tell us a little bit, before we get into what's happening right here, we see this equipment. I'm actually standing in a wet spot right now. Tell us, what is a vernal pool? What's a forested wetland? And how'd you get into all this? All right, well, thanks, Adam. It's a pleasure to have you here on site. Uh, we got a busy project that's wrapping up here in the next couple of days. Uh, I'm the principal consultant of Virginia Vernal Pools, and what we do is uh, freshwater wetlands restoration and enhancement, and we do wildlife pond construction. So we are all about bringing more water to the wild landscape. Sometimes we joke and say that we're frog farmers. And we'll show you here today some sites that we've constructed that have had amphibian use uh, immediately, in some cases within 24 hours. So if you build it within their home range, they will definitely come. They will come. Okay, very good. Well, thank you for that introduction. And we're going to be seeing um, some construction activity today from kind of beginning to end in various stages. Yep. Uh, on this uh, private land in Bath County. By the way, you'll see you see a hard hat that Mike has. It has a Virginia Department of Forestry logo. They're a great partner with lots of things. Mike has done some wildland firefighting, so he's not on the payroll of DOF right now, but he's uh, keeping himself safe with the uh, hard hat that uh, safety he's used. Safety first. The safety first. Okay, very good. Well, uh, thanks. Let's uh, go take a look at some things. This is an old road bed. This is part of the logging operation from seven or eight years ago. And the, the logging roadbed uh, served to do a couple of things. It aided in the drainage, and it also created an open area and a swale that has grown back as a surface wetland. So there's a lot of native vegetation here. You can see sedges and rushes and flowering wetland plants in here. Uh, and so again, the age of this is sort of perfect. One of the things we do as a first step is to actually shave this emergent plant community off the top and, and repurpose it because this is great development. This is the same way a homeowner would buy turf. We lift up mats of this native wetlands vegetation and repurpose it. And that allows our site to mature so much more quickly. And we save lots of money on planting. So it's a, a really smart approach. But you can see the native vegetation here. This site will not be disturbed. What we're doing is putting in a series of pools to close this road and capitalize on the relief here as part of our process. So we've got, we've got two complexes of pools on the spring heads and then a little linear series of pools in the old logging road that serve as traps to close the road. Uh, one of my colleagues from Kentucky used, who was in the Forest Service used to use wetland pools as a means of closing logging roads. So we're following that same model. Here's a, a nice little complex on the north side of our project site. Pool number three is right over there. This is number four and number five is right in front of you. And uh, you'll note that we have large woody debris. These are uh, these were dead standing trees that we repurposed. Uh, we sawed them down and had the operator pick them up with the equipment and position them. Uh, they're, they're put in place just so. And these provide structural elements. Uh, this will allow for basking turtles and even people to explore the wetlands more closely. But the decomposing woody debris also adds nutrients to the water as do the leaves and the limbs. We are in a riparian area. This is a streamside forest near the Calpasture River. And this bottom land is uh, forested and, and one of the few in this immediate neighborhood that has a fairly mature forest still. This area is about two acres uh, that we're working on and there was a timber harvest here about seven or eight years ago. And so the, the successional vegetation that's come back is, a, is actually kind of at the perfect time frame for us to do what we're doing. So we are kind of surgically installing 
small wetlands, forested wetlands in this neighborhood, kind of sneaking in with a small piece of equipment, a, a, a mini excavator, and doing surgical excavations. And we're capitalizing on hydrology here that is, is sort of unique to a riparian area. The storm water comes off the adjoining slopes. There are spring heads at the base of these slopes that discharge. And the water that seeps across this terrace above the river planes out in this flat area. And that's what has created a prehistoric wetland here. Now, that being said, as we know, a lot of bottomland has long been converted by agricultural use or timber harvesting. And so we're doing restoration here. This site has a deep ditch at the very bottom. And this was a diversion to remove the water off the site. This may have been farmed a century and a half ago. So part of what we're doing is restoration to the hydrology by plugging this ditch and, and restoring the bottom of this terrace to its ability to hold water. We're putting in a little bit of a levee that doubles as the walking path for these folks so that they have a, a recreational trail infrastructure to visit their wetlands complex. But plugging this ditch uh, and, and plugging another ditch behind us here was part of the restoration. The enhancement and creation comes in excavating small basins. And those have been strategically located here where the spring seepage along a pathway of seepage water from these spring heads. So we're using what we call the groundwater technique of, of, of installing small pocket wetlands. Right now, uh, we're working on number nine, and the last one, number 10, will be plugging the ditch at the bottom. So it's a, it's a wetlands restoration, enhancement, and creation all wrapped up into one. Okay, hi, I'm Tracy, and I'm excited to be talking to you about the Vernal Pool Project that we're doing with Mike and Virginia Vernal Pools. My family's been coming out to Bath County for almost 30 years. We love it out here. We kayak, we float, we hike, we camp, we explore. My kids have grown up out here. So um, 2017, these 48 acres came up along the river and we were really lucky to acquire them. We spent a lot of time out here enjoying it. In the meantime, I became a master naturalist with Virginia Master Naturalists, and my husband and I have been learning a little bit more about the places that we have been enjoying and um, the way we've been thinking about our relationship to those places has changed. We're feeling a little more responsible, so when um, responsible to, to take care of them and to protect them. Got to meet Mike and go on some vernal pool hikes with Cal, Cal Pasture Preservation Association, and um, we realized we had a really good opportunity, which actually kind of felt like a responsibility, and um, decided to put in the vernal pools, which we know to be um, pretty important wetland habitats for all the species in this wild place that we love. Yeah, boy, she is loading it. Yeah. I'm gonna start with that. Okay. We arrived just as a female dragonfly has finished laying her eggs in this pool, not 24 hours old. This is the smallest of them. This is a little punch out, and we're finishing it up with the, the, uh, the touch of organic debris. So this pool filled from rainwater last night. This was a punch out to see if the groundwater would seep into this area. We left it for a month. It did not. This little pocket was dry. And so then we used compaction. I had our operator uh, tamp this down and so this becomes a different technique. This is the clay liner technique Compacting the clay and creating a confining layer and then last night's rain filled this up Because the compacted clay is confining the water on the surface. And that's the technique we use most often These of course are seasonal wetlands as our most natural and historic wetlands are the same way our streams are at their highest during the wet seasons and at their lowest during the dry seasons. The surface wetlands, whether they are in the floodplain or whether they are in the uplands, are also or they're also driven 
by seasonal input. So snow melt in the winter and rainfall, both fall and late winter and spring. So it's a, it's a seasonal hydrology. And that's why these are referred to as seasonal wetlands. And, uh, and that's the way Mother Nature's been doing things uh, since the last ice age. So we've used the model of these ancient natural wetlands to, to uh, drive the way we design the wetlands that we're creating. So we're putting in what's most natural and uh, what's most suitable for uh, creating habitat in Virginia, these seasonal forested wetlands. And they support uh, a remarkable array of wildlife, both common species and some that are very highly specialized. There are certain amphibians that will only reproduce in these seasonal wetlands because they don't contain fish and the fish then won't prey upon their young. So, you know, both amphibians and invertebrates uh, tend to be, um, you know, supported by these seasonal wetlands much more so than a permanent one. And all of that, of course, is prey base for the larger animals in the forest. So, um, yeah, it's, it's all about biological diversity, increasing diversity. And, and nothing does that like a little wetland system. They're kind of like the coral reefs of the eastern deciduous forest. They really drive up the local biodiversity by providing an array of, of uh, environmental conditions that otherwise wouldn't be here or was here historically and is now restored. This is pool number eight, <laughs> one of two that we constructed yesterday, partly in the rain. And uh, these are two of a complex of four along the edge of a seepage area. And so our water is seeping in from the adjoining pathway and this filled up since yesterday. That's what's great about this site is we get immediately full of water and then it begins to function as a new aquatic system immediately. And as I've mentioned, we had amphibian activity here uh, in the first couple of days. We, in some cases, a pool that we built had frogs in it within 24 hours. On day four here a month ago, we had four species of frogs either uh, calling, mating, or having already deposited eggs in a couple of the first pools. So the, the amphibian and the insect response is instant. Dragonflies all over these puddles just as soon as you get water in them. It's really neat to see. Alex is seeding and strawing. We, we stabilize all of the disturbed soil with annual rye, typically. That puts a cover crop on the site to prevent invasives from starting in those exposed soils and then the native plants can uh, replace the annual seed. And again, we typically add organic debris in the form of leaf litter and sticks and even logs. And all of this are the finishing touches, kind of the furnishings on the new home. All right, well, it's begun raining. So uh, fortunately we were finished with all the footage. So uh, this is been a great 15 minute in the forest uh, video segment. Thank you so much, Mike. My Final pleasure. words? Uh, nope, just appreciate you coming out. Uh, this is what we deal with, right? We have kind of a love hate relationship to water. And uh, you know, this is all about, this is all about wetlands conservation. Makes it a little challenging sometimes to build in the rain, but the water is what we want because we want to be able to capture it and bank it for the future and for the use of wildlife and for the enhanced these forests here in Virginia. So thanks for coming out. And uh, thanks for having us. Thank you to the landowner. And thank you for the cab on your truck right now. Keep me a little bit dry. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>